thank you so much for um, allowing me to come here and talk about social emotional learning at Lindbergh. If you want to go to the next slide, Colin. So um, Dr. Lake shared at our last um, board workshop meeting that we, on his listening and learning tour, tour he um, received some feedback from parents and from that pulled five successful indicators that our parents were wanting to see within our district. And I'm going to touch on the second one, social emotional learning here at um, Lindbergh. And so really this is an opportunity to share if this was of such great value to our parents that they mentioned that throughout the, um, and Dr. Lake received that feedback, we have an obligation to show what we are doing to meet that um, criteria. So why social emotional learning? And this is kind of an older one. This is from, this is some research from um, KSOL from 2011. Um, Durlach and others research shows that social emotional learning not only improves achievement by an average of 11 percentile points, but it also increases those pro-social behaviors like kindness, sharing, and empathy. Um, it will improve students' attitudes towards school and reduces depression and stress among students. In the next slide. So the why and some other things, that's a little bit more with the 2017, the Aspen Institute, talking about programming in social emotional learning across the school year drives, it drives that increase in executive functioning, self-efficacy, -effic excuse me, persistence, pro-social behaviors, grades and scores on standardized tests, which is, of course, we want to see our students do really well. Um, children with stronger social emotional competencies are also more likely to enter and graduate from college succeed in their careers and have positive work and family relationships, better mental and physical health, reduce criminal behaviors, and become engaged citizens. So that's just a little on the why. And that one is 2017, just a little bit more recent, and talks a little bit about the evidence of why we do social emotional learning. So I'm going to get into the what we do here. So if you'll go to the next slide. So talking about our process, um, we really have been talking about what does social emotional look like at Lindbergh. So Thinking about that particular, um, thinking about that particular thing, we received some feedback from parents through advisories. Maybe it was our Lindbergh parent advisory through our student life advisory, talking to um, teachers, just really making sure that social emotional learning we know is important to our families. It's been brought up on that listening and learning tour, but where are our particular needs? And one of the biggest needs that came up was really that consistency. We need to ensure like if we're doing strong social emotional practices at one building that it's also being done at other buildings. So really that was a huge need, having that consistency, making sure that we are laying out that foundational um, social emotional experience for students, that social emotional um, experience for students throughout our district. What's happening at Truman is also happening at Spearing. And so, Thinking about that, we knew that that was an important need, but we also know that character education is really important, so we did not want to see that go to the wayside either. So talking about our social-emotional resources, we really have tied together character because we still really hold that to be um, an important part of our education experience for students, but also those skills within social-emotional, how can we get our students to show um, you know, mastery and understanding of those. We also looked at some materials that were out there that we thought really met our needs. We had a lot of parent feedback. It was great talking about our bullying supports and how can we bring in lessons on bullying as, well, bullying as well. And so when we were looking for particularly the K-5, we also wanted to see how could we make this all, how could we bring this all together and make it two separate things that were being, you know, too much learning for kids in too many different areas being pulled in too many different um, directions. So how can we bring this all in to be one, one thing? We piloted some materials at our elementary. We piloted second step is one of the curriculum pieces that we um, worked on with our elementary schools. And we collected some feedback for that. The pilot was around 2019 and 20. And last year was our very first year of implementing second step and character strong, which I will talk about here in some um, additional, additional slides. And so last year was that very first year of implementation. If you go to the next slide, you know, we did receive some feedback. When I time marked this feedback as going through, it was March 2020, so we all know that was kind of when things hit. But here's two things that I just pulled. I thought they were really fun to share with the board about how our parents felt when their kids were talking about it at home. If their kids didn't talk about it at home, they probably didn't have as great a feedback to provide as far as the experience that the students were sharing. But in this particular first one, um, the student said that her daughter shared about being assertive when she needs something. 
and also about solving problems with peers. So that's always great to hear. Another parent shared that um, her daughter enjoyed the lessons about managing emotions and how she can better react in certain situations. Um, the parents stated that they talked about how she was actually applying the strategies, um, both inside and outside of school. And the parent appreciated the learning on how to calm down and also use some of those strategies as well. Going to the next slide, some feedback from our teachers. They really do love the lessons. Um, we were in, I've been in six buildings thus far when our, since our teachers have been back. And teachers are talking about they really appreciate students using that common, that common language, particularly around bullying and also the, the classroom lessons. Um, it really, in the bullying, um, it really gives kids an opportunity to role model and practice that assertiveness that we all want to see our students do. At the, at the really young levels, first grade and kindergarten, the um, second step curriculum resources, excuse me, come with stuffed animals, and the teachers talk a lot about how the kids really enjoy those things. It's very age appropriate. Um, the teachers also like the scripts, the videos, and the activities, and there's also home links that can come home and parents can do with their students, knowing that parents are very busy, may not always have time, so it's always an optional thing. Um, teachers did share when are we supposed to do this. That was a big concern during that um, first year of implementation. And what we had to do was go in with training saying, this is not an additional thing. This is something you would do during your class meetings, which is a structure we um, want all of our teachers to do, is have a class meeting, that time to build community with their students. If you go to the next slide. So just to give you an idea, in case anybody wants to look into any of these, you can Google these resources, Second Step and Character Strong. Um, they are available to do. You are also, anyone is always welcome to give me a call. I've had a very fortunate um, meeting, or, you know, a very fortunate meeting yesterday with two parents. I thought it was extremely productive. We went through some resources and more, um, and just really talking about um, what is important to them, what's important for their child. And it was just really great to hear that feedback and think about how can we reflect, how can we take that feedback, how can we move forward with it, making sure that we're always being inclusive of, of all people and their, different, and their perspectives as well. So moving into the next slide. If you think about social emotional, um, the big picture of it, we have our tier one, which is what we use second step and character strong for. We want every student to have that foundational um, component of it, those lessons where they are. And then we have tier two. This is for students after receiving their universal supports may just need a little bit of extra help. Um, so we have interventions in social emotional learning for them as well. And then in tier three, when students need a lot more help, we get, um, we can dig into some social emotional supports that are more targeted and based specifically on their need. So I'll talk a little bit about that if you go to the next slide. Um, for our, so here's some of our tier one, the basic structure, the how we do it. So I talked a little bit about the why, the what we do, and here's how it is done in our district, social emotional learning. At the elementary level, social emotional learning is um, conducted during class meetings. Those meetings last about 10 to 20 minutes long. Um, the topics within character, or excuse me, in second step are skills for learning, empathy, emotion management, and problem solving. Those are the four big strands. They are in kindergarten through fifth grade. Those are those topics. I'm happy to sit down and share um, those with anybody who is ever interested in looking at any of those as well. In middle school, the social emotional learning is done during flyer time. Um, social emotional is not all they do in flyer time, but when they do, it's typically about one to two times a week. Those topics in the character strong resource, which is what they use there, are values and purposes, empathy and compassion, emotion, understanding and regulation, goals and habits, leadership and teamwork. The high school is PAC, they call it PAC, it stands for, they changed the acronym, so I had to write this down more for me than for anybody else, but Perspectives, Academic, and Community. It's a time for the students to um, get together and build community. I put the topics here, they also use Character um, Strong as a resource, but the I would say they do not go through all of the lessons in Character Strong, just to make sure that I'm being fully transparent. As we move to the high school, we really start to think about ca career development and how students talk about the things of, that they are interested in, the careers that they want to engage in, and how they use those strengths, their own personal strengths to move forward. So social emotional probably takes, it, it would probably be less explicitly taught as the student moves into the high school. It's not that it's not, it does not exist, so I don't want to send that message, but 
the shift is really towards that career development as students move into the high school. If you go to the next slide, you'll see that our counselors also do lessons. These are push-in lessons. These happen more at the elementary um, level and the, the middle school level than they do at the high school. Again, if a counselor is pushing into a classroom to talk about um, their curriculum, their counseling curriculum, they're more heavily focused on that career development as well. Um, but you will see if you ever want to find out more information about um, the counseling curriculum and the standards that they use, you can find those on um, desk, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's website, and they are part of the Missouri Learning Standards. They're based around these three big ideas of social emotional development, academic development, and career development. And so those are K through 12. Those are the three big strands that are for all counselors according to the Missouri Comprehensive um, Counseling um, Guide. Next slide, please. So we have a foundation for social emotional learning um, through class meetings, flyer time, impact at the high school. When students need more support in social emotional learning or meeting some of those social emotional skills, we start to move towards tier two. This is not for every single student. These are for students who just need a little extra help. And the goal behind that is to support them and get them back on track. This does involve parent involvement. Um, it does include parents being a part of that plan. What does their student need? Um, it also can be supported and facilitated by our school counselors. Sometimes it's individual, sometimes it's group sessions. And it's mostly aligned to CASEL's five competencies where a student may be struggling or having a lagging skill in any of these five particular areas, such as social awareness, self-awareness, relationship skills, emotional management, responsible decision making, but we also look at function too. We um, may look at is a student trying to access something or avoid something. So we look at a few different things and that's, we learn a lot of that through our partnership with special school district. They have a lot of great um, supports and things that we as a partner district are able to learn and access with through that partnership. Um, for tier three, when a student may need a lot more help regarding social emotional learning, we again, number one, get the parents involved in that because there may be some type of assessment. And when we're assessing students on individual skills, we want that parent to be involved and knowledgeable about what is going on. Um, sometimes this is a referral done by the school, but sometimes it's a parent calling and saying, I have a concern, I really need your help. So these are, can also be supported tier three by our school counselors, but our social workers are licensed clinical social workers, which is amazing. So that is like, really a great thing to have. We have three in the district. They are also there to help support the student, but also build that connection with the family too, like talking about the, talking to the family about here's what we're working on, here's how you can help um, at home as well, and give, give us feedback on what is working and what is not. We also have partnerships with Children's Service Fund. So we do memorandums of understanding with not too many, but a few that we know are tried and true that provide great services. Um, we have those therapeutic supports in our district so we will have youth in need um, therapists we have chads providing social emotional that's usually a parent referral for a chads um, social emotional teacher but we also have um, supports through provident and these are all therapeutic supports that are housed within our school they also align with these competencies um, from CASEL, but they may also dig into some more targeted specific lagging skills depending on the student's need so if you move to the next slide, this is just kind of an overall, I do want to say that even though this looks like a cone, I don't, it, it, I think now that I look at it, I don't want people to think that um, one thing is um, those class meetings and the counseling lessons, like not all students get those counseling lessons. So, but I just wanted to kind of give that overall big picture of where we are and what we're trying to avoid as, you'll, as I'll mention here in a second. Class meetings, flyer time, pack, that's a time for students to really dig into those character lessons, those social emotional lessons, and to do to practice those four C's, which are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. That is really what that is all for. Those are those opportunities where we give kids to skills to learn about it, talk about it, and um, practice it. The, those counseling lessons are for all students too. Those are tier one supports. Those are all based on the grade level expectations as I just stated. When students don't get it, they or may need a little bit of help, we have those tier two interventions. And those are evidence-based um, interventions that we employ to help support the students. And I just want to reiterate um, that parents are involved in that part of the 
that part of the process. When students really need a lot of support, um, those targeted interventions are um, brought in and parents are again a part of those and we do use evidence-based supports um, for our students. That partnership with Children's Service Fund is really for something uh, much, much more intense. Um, those are therapeutic supports and those are happened by um, providers outside of Lindbergh schools that we have MOU memorandum of understandings with. And then if we still are not making gains, students aren't responding to the interventions that we need, we will consider elig eligibility under IDEA. The, um, but our goal is to always avoid getting to that part. We want to see what we can do on our side before we ever have to move to that eligibility component. So if you go to the next slide, just wanted to give you a little bit about what social emotional is, that big picture from what happens in the classroom, what happens with our counselors, and what happens when students are responding to the things that we are, uh, or need additional supports throughout. 